Hi, welcome back to Science with Code. Today we're going to take a look at another example of a Lewis dot structure and uh, something a little bit more complicated and we'll take a look and see whether or not this molecule is polar or not from drawing its Lewis dot diagram. Alright, so we have this molecule CF4, so carbon tetrafluoride, and I've already drawn out the components for it. Let's go ahead and try to figure out how to put this together. Now I gave you guys a big hint when we're drawing Lewis dot structures. Remember that if carbon is actually part of the um, molecular formula, there's a good chance that carbon will be the atom that's in the middle. And for our purposes in this example, that's exactly right. The carbon actually happens to be in the middle and all the fluorines are actually around it. I've actually forgotten to draw one of the other fluorines, so let's go ahead and draw the Lewis dot uh, diagram for just fluorine just to give you guys an example. So when we're drawing fluorine, again, we go in one direction. So I'm going to go clockwise, and I'm going to spread the electrons out before I start to pair them up. And since fluorine has seven valence electrons, I'm going to go start at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And notice that there's one electron that's left by itself. The rest of them are considered lone pairs. So I will go ahead and put a box around those, put a box around these, put a box around those. So it's three lone pairs around fluoride and one unpaired electron. That makes seven. And so now it seems pretty simple. We'll put the carbon in the middle and put the fluorines around it. All right, like so. Now that we've got our molecule and you can kind of see that each one of these fluorines has three lone pairs around it, let's ask the question. Is there a higher concentration of lone pairs on one side of the molecule versus the other? And it seems like it's pretty even all the way around. And that actually makes this molecule nonpolar. Nonpolar. Again, and the reason why is because each one of these fluorines right here has three valence electrons. And uh, we won't get into the discussion about electronegativity, but understand that all of these electrons, okay, because they're evenly spread out within uh, the outskirts of the molecule. Um, make the molecule nonpolar. Uh, again, if there's an even distribution of these lone pairs around the central atom and or around the molecule itself, that makes the molecule nonpolar. Now, uh, how does this all sort of apply, Mr. Go? You're probably asking yourself. When we get into solubility rules, you'll understand that the, mo uh, the molecules themselves, um, if they are polar or nonpolar, sort of have these uh, properties, physical properties, and chemical properties that allow it to either dissolve or not dissolve into other substances. All right, and uh, but that's for another discussion. So I'll see you guys in class.